Okay, let's do just one more example here, and this one we will have an object that is going through rotational motion. So what we have is a pulley weighing 12 pounds, having a radius of gyration of 8 inches, is connected to two blocks as shown. Assume no axle friction, so good, that'll simplify things. Determine the angular acceleration, angular acceleration, so radians per second squared of how fast this pulley is rotating and the acceleration of each block. So the pulley is rotating, the blocks are moving around, so we have three different things that we're keeping track of the motion of here. For the pulley, rotational motion, remember forces add to MA, moments are going to add to I alpha is going to be part of that moment balance. So for our moment of inertia, instead of R squared M, it's going to be the radius of gyration squared M. And keep everything in terms of feet instead of inches. So 32.2 feet per second squared divided through 12, and then this is mass, not weight. So be sure and divide by G and get units right. So here's our inertia, feet per second squared, and this is what we're going to be using in our moment balance for this guy. Okay, so we've got a lot of different things moving around. Let's go ahead and think about what direction the motion is going in. So if we do a quick moment balance around the center of mass, we have 6 inches to 10 pounds versus 10 inches to the 5 pounds. So it looks like this thing is going to be going counterclockwise. The 10 pounds will win. So we have block B going down and block A is going up. Now you can consider this as just one system or we can start carving it up and think about the motion of each piece of it. So let's just carve it up and, th and walk through each piece and decide what each part of it is doing here for a little bit. For the blocks, so the blocks are just moving straight up and down, no rotation here, so we can do a straight force balance on them. B is moving down, so it's going counterclockwise, B is moving down. We've got the tension pulling up on it, the weight going down, and it's not static. Tension is not equal and opposite to the weight. If it's moving down, that means the weight is more than the tension. The tension is not quite holding this thing up. Versus A, A is going to be moving up, and that means the tension is larger than the force holding it down. So the tension is doing more than just holding up the weight. It's holding up the weight and it's moving the thing. So A is going to have an acceleration going up. So we have some free body diagrams and kinetic diagrams for our blocks. Now let's go ahead and look at the pulley. So if we draw all of the forces acting on the pulley, right here in the center, we have the weight of the pulley pulling down. We have some kind of a pin holding it in place going up. Now, for the pulley, it is not moving up and down. It's stationary. All it's doing is just spinning in place. So when we draw the kinetic diagram for the pulley, all we have there is the moment of inertia times our angular acceleration. So for the blocks, we have MA going on. For the pulley, it's just rotating in place. So everything's going to add together to I alpha for this case. So we have the tensions pulling down. We have the reaction of that pin at the center, and between all these guys, it's going to be, create just a rotational motion. Now, this is splitting the whole system apart into multiple pieces. What if we looked at everything together? So if you kind of draw your system boundaries to encapsulate the motion of everything going together, what you'll see is we have equal and opposite forces canceling out for these tensions. This problem statement doesn't ask us for the tensions. And so splitting it apart is really making life hard on ourselves because now we have a few more unknowns. And if you look at the entire system all together, those tension forces become internal and cancel out, and we don't have to, to worry about it, right? So if you look at the forces acting on the entire system, we have the forces holding the pulley in place in the center, and the weights of these little objects, 10 pounds and 5 pounds, and we now no longer have to worry about the tensions. The final resulting motion is going to be the pulley rotating, 
block B moving around and block A moving around. So it's it's good to kind of think through each individual piece of it and decide what kind of motion is happening for each part of it. But then sometimes it gets easier if you just group everything together at the end. And this is kind of a silly example, but remember some simple things from math. So if we like have some equation for block B and then another equation for block A and then another equation for this, and if we add it all together, there's going to be stuff that cancel out of that. But when you're drawing these huge equations for a bunch of different stuff going on, remember this sort of a deal. So you just, whatever is equal to what, you just add all of that together and we'll have this ginormous equation that has kind of everything in it. So we're going to go and have a little bit of everything in it from, from here on out. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some equations to this thing. We've got our free body diagram, a kinetic diagram here. And what's going to help us the most at this point is to start taking the moment. Thinking about what point would be best to take the moment around. If we take the moment around the center of gravity here, that will get rid of our need of having to solve for like the reaction at the pin and dealing with the mass of the pulley. So take the moment around the point that will kind of give you the easiest equation at the end of it. And then on this left hand side, you're going to add things together just like you did in static. So go back a year and if you're in statics calculating the moment around the center of this pulley, what would that look like? So you've got a weight on one side. So here's our six inches going out to the 10 pounds. And that would be in the positive direction. So remember counterclockwise is positive. Use that right hand rule for which direction things are in. And then over on the other side, we have the five pounds hanging down and that's going to be at a distance of 10 inches and keep everything in feet here. So that's the total moment acting around the center of gravity. And then this moment is not going to add to zero. It's going to add together to all of the motion going on. And remember, we have quite a few things to keep track of for the motion. We have the pulley is rotating, so we're going to add that motion in, and that's created by that unbalanced moment. We also have each of those blocks are moving around. So we have block B going down and block A coming up. And be really careful about the signs here. So if we're calling counterclockwise positive, we're going to call B going down positive as well and then A going up. So you can think about what is adding to this and making it rotate faster versus what is making it go slower. So B is positive, it's making it rotate faster. A is negative, it's making it rotate slower. So really, really think through those signs and make sure they match up so that the motion on one thing is in agreement with the sign convention for the motion on everything here. So we have R cross MA, R cross MA, I alpha, that's going to encapsulate all of the motion of the entire system that that moment adds together to. Okay, we've got quite a few unknowns here. We've got acceleration of B, acceleration of A, alpha. Is there a way that we can turn this from three unknowns into just one unknown? So reach back in your chapter 11 stuff and let's think through how we can relate all of these accelerations to one another and whittle this down to just one unknown. So if you remember, the acceleration of A is going to be just our alpha. So what's going on tangent to this rotational motion and B is the same thing. So B is out at a radius of six inches. So you can go back and forth between meters per second squared and radians per second squared just through what radius it is from that axis of rotation. And if we make these substitutions in here, that will reduce our unknown. So now instead of three things in one equation, we just have alpha, alpha, alpha. So we're going to replace those accelerations with our alpha. And now we just have one unknown in that equation and we can pop through and solve for it. So yay, now we know how fast this pulley is rotating. So counterclockwise, which is positive, 2.4 radians per second squared. 
And once we know the rotation of this, we can come back to that kinematic relationships and find the acceleration of each individual block. So we're just taking that angular acceleration, multiplying it by the radius, and that's how fast A is moving. And remember, A is going up and B is going down. So through all of these, and use a cross product if those signs are bothering you, but really use the diagrams. The diagrams are going to tell you which direction everything is going in and help you keep track of the motion of everything. So it really does start with drawing super, super good free body diagrams and then thinking through in depth the motion that is happening in your system. Okay, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have questions.